Hello. How are you, Matthew? Hey, everyone. I'm good. How are you? I'm all right. Yeah, what are we? I hear it's one I of the reckon. coldest days ever in Adelaide, or was uh, that yesterday? Uh, two degrees yesterday morning. Uh, what was it? No, it was this morning, two degrees in Birdwood. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I'm feeling bad about even looking at a heater. <laughs> <laughs> My dog did not want to go out this morning for a wee. <laughs> Well, I can imagine it probably freezes. Anyway, another story for another time. Yes. <laughs> Today, tonight, we're here for the fireside chat with Matthew and uh, just a bit of housekeeping before I go. Um, now we've got Jade who says she can't hear us. Let me check on my other computer because if we've got no audio, we've got us both unmuted here. And I will just make sure. <laughs> yep. Okay, so I'm going to type into Jade. Yep. Um, check her. So. Can okay. everyone else hear us? Yeah, we can. We've got audio. Check okay. Your, uh, Jade can hear now. Okay, beautiful. Okay. Hey! Yay! Okay. The crowd goes well. Thank you. <laughs> there are people. All right. <laughs> Patricia's here as well. So please do let your friends and family and loved ones know that they will mutually exclusive. They're probably not, but let your <laughs> let your friends, families, and family know that Matthew is on tonight for his fireside chat and uh, and just hit the little button that goes, that, the arrow that goes that way. Uh, if you're on a desktop, you can invite people to watch as well, ha have a watch party or even pop it in your story. So if you're savvy enough to do that, we'd love to appear in your Facebook story as well, which helps spread the word, helps spread the good cheer and help spread the message as well so we're all healing together. That would be great. The other thing is we are live tonight originating on mytimetv.live. We are also live on Matthew Greenwood's Spiritual Journeys. We're live on Be Live in 5, the talk show network, Women in Business Amplified and a few other pages. Please, if you're on any of those pages, come over to mytimetv.live and you will be able to um, talk to Matthew or type in, we'll see your comments. Otherwise, we won't see your comments. Um, having said that, uh, we do have a chat bot set up on both pages so on meditation with, uh, sorry, Matthew Greenwood Spiritual Journeys and mytimetv.live. And if you make a comment on either of those pages, you will get a message into your inbox saying you actually qualified for a spirit guide reading, uh, not yes. to go in the drawer rather. <laughs> oh, Matthew's going, she's not promising me to everybody, is she? <laughs> no, you, no. Go in the, you go in the drawer to win a spirit guide reading, which is drawn the following week. So if you that don't want to go in the drawer, you don't have to do anything. If you do want to, you just type yes or why, uh, just follow the bouncy ball to register and you'll be in the drawer to win. So um, the, other, the other thing I want to, want to mention before I go is meditation with Matthew on Monday nights. There is a community. I'll put the link in the comments and you can join the community and uh, do a, it's an extended meditation, uh, 7 till 9 p.m. Australian Central Standard Time. And uh, that's inside of a private Facebook group. So I'll pop the link in. And if you would like to join the group, you're more than welcome to. Whew, cool. Is there anything else? Take some air. <laughs> <laughs> Breathe. <laughs> I think that's it. Else? Okay, I think that's so just a little reminder, just hit the little arrow that goes that way and make sure we get this out there as far wide and as wide as possible. Cool. See you on the side. <laughs> Thanks, Adair. Hey, everyone. Well, we've got a winner for tonight from last week's um, Fireside Chat. It is Leanne Muldoon. So, Leanne, uh, we'll be in contact with you and um, to arrange a time for 
your spirit guide reading. Um, so I've been doing some catching up and, and uh, dishing out those prizes, the, the readings. I did a couple today. They went really well. So um, more to come. Um, now we're going to be talking tonight about ritual and ceremonies around protection. Um, it's been an interesting subject over the years. In the 31 years I've been doing this work, it's come up many times and in many different ways. But uh, before we do that, uh, we're going to do a little quickie meditation, a little quick one. Just This is um, a grounding exercise uh, that I give to people when I'm mentoring them. Um, to anyone that's sensitive, I advise they be doing this. And... Uh, it's a great way to stabilize your energy, um, but we'll actually, I'll be talking more about, about that. And uh, so this meditation, this grounding exercise will actually come into what I'm talking about tonight as well. So, um, so let's do that now. Um, so everyone that is uh, online and listening, um, if you just find a little bit of a quiet spot and it's only going to take about five to 10 minutes all up. So here we go. So if you'd like to just close your eyes, get yourself comfortable and take a couple of nice, deep, long, full breaths just to begin. And as you make that conscious breath, you already begin to ac access life force as well as oxygen. And as you continue that deep, deeper, full breath, both in and out, Just the fact that you're consciously focusing on your breath literally opens your energy system up. Instead of it being shallow breath, short breath, you're literally opening it up to your spiritual aspect more. Okay, so with that breath, knowing that you're breathing in life force, what I would like what I would like you to do is to take a nice, deep, full breath in, consciously taking that life force in. Then with the breath out, I'd like you to push that life force down through your body, your base chakra, your legs, your feet, down through your feet and into the earth. So just for a few breaths, focusing on that, roughly about five to six breaths. Just keeping that flow of energy Breathing that life force in, letting it flow down your body, through your base chakra, your legs, your feet, and down into the earth. So we have a multitude of chakras below our feet. Part of our energy system is incredibly extensive, far more than the books tell you. So what I would like you to do next is same thing, taking a nice deep breath in. This time with the breath out, I want you to drive that breath, that life force, right down to the core of the planet, Earth. And there is a chakra point that we have down there. It's our deepest chakra point, and it's called the Earth Chakra. So just keep that breath focused on driving it right down to the core of the Earth, to our Earth Chakra. So this is a much fuller connection to the earth. It's, a, it's an all over connection. So having this connection with not only the base, but that really deep chakra point we have gives us an incredibly deep connection to the earth, of course. Just keeping that breath focused on that deep chakra knowing that as you activate that chakra point, you're also uh, combining your energy in with the Earth's core chakra. She has one down there at the same place that we have our Earth chakra. So holding that space just for a couple more breaths. Now, if you can just calm your breath, just relax that breath. 
knowing that your base chakra and that earth chakra are all nice and open. Now bringing your focus to the center of your body, not to a chakra this time. So we're going to go into a deeper part of our energy system, a much higher vibrational level of our energy system. It's called our core star energy, or in simple terms, it's the God force within. Whatever you believe God to be, great spirit, creator, universe, doesn't matter. It's all the same energy. So as you dive your awareness into the center of your body, knowing that we are far more than just physical, now imagine diving your energy even deeper into your energy system, knowing that we are multi-dimensional beings. Just keep diving your energy deeper and deeper until you see or feel a light or a high vibrational energy source. When you feel or see that light, now begin to expand it out. In steps, we'll take it first to the physical body. So expanding that light out from deep within your core, bringing it up and out into the physical. Imagining every cell in your body being touched by that light. As that light begins to fill your physical body, to even imagining every cell in your body vibrating at a high frequency. Now expanding it out beyond your physical into the more earthly part of the energy system, which is about seven energy bodies out, roughly three to four meters. So filling that space, that three to four meter space all around you. Now beginning to compact that light into that space. Imagine this like you're blowing up a balloon with air, except what you're doing is blowing up that space with light and it's getting fuller, more compacted. And when I count to three, what I'd love you to do is to just let that energy explode out in all directions without boundaries or limitations. So one, two, three, let it go. And just keep letting it expand out. All right. Okay, so we could stay there forever. It's a great space to, to be in. time to come back now but you don't have to bring that light back with you you can leave that light expanded out so just bringing your awareness back to your physical body and your physical breath breathing into the physical body and then just gently regrounding your energy just the base chakra is enough so remember breathing in that life force and then breathing that life force out down through your body, through your base chakra, your legs, your feet, and into the earth. And then when you're ready, you can open your eyes. All right, so that is a very, very simple exercise to do for those that haven't done that one before that's a very simple exercise to do to keep your energy more stable um, so before we start 
I'm just going to go through and read out some of the courses that I've got coming up very briefly, and then we'll jump into the, the talk. So on July 18th and 19th, I have a level one shamanism workshop on that weekend. Then this is for people that have done previous level one. So I've got a level two coming up on June 27th and 28th. I have uh, myself and Monica, the enchantress, you may know, I'm sure you know of Monica. Um, we have on Sunday, the 5th of July, we're going to be doing a healing the healers workshop. So we'll both be combining our skills on that one. And this will be at uh, Riverdale Spiritual Center. On Sunday, the 12th of July, I've got a drum making workshop coming up. And uh, look, I could go into all the details of everything, but it'll cut the talk short. If you're interested in any of those and you want to have a chat about them, please do. The info is up on the, the uh, Facebook site. Um, but i um, happy to have a chat with you. You can ring me on 410 six five eight seven nine seven and i'm sure adair will have that uh um walking across the screen any second so all right here we go i haven't done a talk on this stuff before on this particular um, exercise I, I normally bring this in briefly on the shamanism workshops i go into quite a bit of detail in the shamanism workshops but let's let's um kind of start from the beginning really um, when you think of really ancient cultures and I, I I'm talking now beyond the Native American culture the Aboriginal culture I'm talking about going right back to caveman days and uh, always in any tribal culture there has always been a medicine man or a medicine woman or sometimes both and um, it's, it's a bit of a fallacy that all really earth-connected people, whether it be Australian, um, American, South American, European, it doesn't matter, um, but not all people are deeply spiritual and have those abilities to, to step into the spirit world, hear guides, hear spirits, see them, and um, be able to transverse different realities um, at will. It's just not, it's just not uh, uh, a truth. So in any society, in any uh, tribal situation or community, there are always, you know, a small number of deeply spiritual people. And generally they would get the role of um, being the spiritual advisors, the uh, people that keep the balance um, and that make, have a, a very strong connection to the ancestors to guides to uh, the spirit world and to many variable uh, levels of the spirit world and also to great spirit um, because there would be times when that advice was needed but the thing is and this this is where things have got a little bit lost over over the years there's a huge responsibility in stepping into those worlds and sometimes just through the education of people on a spiritual level there's a lacking in education on how to actually step into the spirit world it's like when you step into um uh, let's what's a good analogy say a probably not the best analogy but here we go anyway maybe when you step into a a rifle range and uh, there are people shooting guns and at targets or a bow and arrow range um, archery range there's a certain responsibility that you have and that other people have as to where you step obviously you don't step in the middle of the gun and the target or the arrow and the target but unfortunately sometimes there's not a lot of teaching around this in the spiritual aspect so we we look at um, ways sometimes 
of doing this ourselves, and sometimes we get into trouble if we haven't got that education or that training. Now, when you think of a, a medicine man or a medicine woman, they would have been trained sometime in their early past um, by another medicine man or medicine woman, and they would have been given many teachings around how to step into the spirit world um, and how to deal with not just good spirits, but dark spirits. And one thing with shamanism, which is the essence of uh, the earth-connected spirituality, is to not have a fear around um, the darker side of spirituality. It's not that you want to be embodying that, obviously, but when you have fear of something, you normally, you normally attract it to you. If you hold a fear within you around a certain thing, part of the way the universe works is you end up attracting those things to you that relate to that fear. And so you go then through the experience of understanding that. It's just how um, this magnetic attraction, um, like attracts like, or the law of attraction works. But isn't it, wouldn't it be a, a distinct advantage if you had had training um, in knowing what to do or how to step into that, those worlds? Now, I'm going to take it back into my history now, going back into uh, the beginnings of uh, where my teachings came from. Um, so it came from varied places to start with. Um, I was involved with a couple of the spiritualist churches and uh there was always it was it was interesting you know i I came from a very um, green perspective you know i hadn't hadn't been brought up in the spiritualist uh, world i i came straight from being a furniture maker and then stepped into a, a meditation group that was run by one of the spiritualist churches and there was so much hype i thought at the time about making sure that you protect yourself. And um, I'm listening to all of this, wondering, well, what are we protecting ourselves from? And everyone would say, oh, but you've got to protect yourself. Whenever you do meditation, you've got to protect yourself. And it's almost like the amount, not with everyone, but with certain number of these people, there was seemed to be a lot of fear um, connected to this these statements. And it made me quite curious. So I didn't have any fear. I didn't, um, but I thought, well, if I'm going to do this, hey, let's do it. And uh, so I started doing this protection more and more and how it was, um, how it was said to me or advised to me to protect myself was to surround myself in an egg of white light. And I thought, hmm, okay. Um, so I can do that, I can imagine that. So I did and um, didn't seem to change anything. I still had the experiences whether I had done that protection or not. So I continued it up because it looked like, well, this is what you've got to do. Um, but what seemed to happen more and more is the connection that I had already achieved with my guides, even at an early stage, something interesting began to happen. And the more I was doing this protection, and look, I'm the sort of person, when I get into something, I'm going to do it, you know, I'm going to do it in a big way. So with this egg of white light thing, I was putting energy through every energy body that I knew was there and uh, tying it up in a big, big bow at the end. But what ended up happening, I'm kidding about the bow, um, what ended up happening was my verbal connection to my guides um, that I started to hear quite clearly, it actually went. And I'm thinking, what's going on here? And uh, and so I'm putting two and two together. And I, I thought, now what's going to happen if I drop this protection? Am I going to get uh, suddenly attacked by who knows what? And so what I did, um, I dropped the protection. And surprise, surprise, I started hearing my guides again. So um, I thought, well, what was that all about uh, when you're supposed to be doing this protection? But what I, I started to look back on was these people that were really pushing 
that I had to protect myself and, that, and this fear was obviously driving them. You know, whenever you project, whenever you do anything um, in life and you're projecting fear into that, you're most likely going to get a negative reaction from it because, again, that law of attraction states that if you project out fear, well, it's going to attract situations that are fearful. And so I started to notice some of these people that were heavily, heavily, heavily into the fear side of needing protection and their lives were seemed to be very low vibrational. They seemed to be hanging on to a lot of stuff and um, had a lot of needy people around them. And it was quite a, you know, it was quite a heavy life they were leading. And I seem to be, you know, I'm not trying to brag here, but I'm, I seem to be growing quite quickly because I didn't have fear. Um, and, uh, and but what I thought, well, I need to be doing something, I guess, because I was stepping into a lot more than, than um, probably most people were at, at a fairly quick rate too. Um, and I was, I was seeing negative beings, negative entities, and, and uh, I thought, well, I need to be doing something because it just felt like I should be doing something. But the fear, the fear protection wasn't something I, I felt right about. So then I bought a, um, a couple of books by a woman called uh, Barbara Ann Brennan, and I'm sure some of you out there would have heard of her. And uh, she, she has these beautiful two books, Hands of Light and Light Emerging. And I'd already read majority of the level one, the, sorry, the... Um, uh, first book hands of light but in light emerging the second book uh, she's got a couple of chapters around core star energy which was what i just ran you guys through with that light that internal light in the center of your being so what this is this is um like i explained it's, it's the god force within you know most people when they think of god they think of god outside of them they don't actually register that God is inside of you. So when you actually, you know, register that God, the energy of God, however you perceive God to be, is inside of you as well, and you're actually radiating that out through all of your energy system beyond this um, imaginary egg of white light, which I'll talk come back to that one because it actually doesn't do everything that it's... Um, it is said to do um, and what you're doing is you're running high basically you're running high vibrational energy through your whole energy system from the core out rather than just encapsulating your energy that's obviously holding fear in it as well um, if you're that way inclined and this then uh, completely changes your energy system so what it does it achieves um, it achieves cleaning your energy up also, which was a byproduct I didn't realize was going to happen. So when I first started tapping into that core star energy or that God force within, what started to happen was my baggage, so my personal baggage, began to come up to the surface, stuff I'd never even been conscious of before. Because one thing I learned in shamanism down the track was that anything of anything of a negative nature that you hold within yourself or that exists, if it's impacted constantly or consistently by high vibrational energy, it can't, that negative energy or that low vibrational energy cannot sustain itself when it's, it's um, being hit by high vibrational energy. So it has to either disperse, break down, come to the surface and be, be seen. And this is what actually clears your energy. But what it also does, it doesn't allow things of a negative nature to get in. So um, I'm just wondering, you know, what I would like to do. So what's the time now? It's 7.30. In about 10 minutes, I'd like to answer some questions. If anyone has any questions about protection, um, because this is a, a really a subject that doesn't get actually talked about a lot in the spiritual field. Um, there's a lot of misconceptions about protection, but there's also uh, sometimes it's it's greatly needed. And this is a subject that could be talked about all day, and we don't obviously have that much time. But um, I'm happy to 
to go with questions on this one because I need I want to keep it uh, valid to what's going on and the people here that are listening. So, um, all right. So with with this protection, um, there, what are we protecting ourselves from? Uh, personally, I don't even like the word protection because it it gives these connotations of something trying to get you. Is that true? Well, sometimes it can be, but it there's there's actually a catch to this. If you're hanging on to negative energy within yourself, if you're hanging on to old emotional energy and you're refusing to look at it, then what that does, it actually minimizes your base chakra energy. It, it weakens your base chakra energy. Now, anything of a negative nature, whether it be other people's negative thoughts, um, negative spirits, negative beings or entities, um, your weak point will always be your base chakra or lack of base chakra energy. So it's really important to um, be not only doing something to help bolster your energy, um, which is that core star, working with that core star energy, but it's also um, important to be letting go of your emotional baggage. And look, there's a, there's a lot of supposed quick fixes out there, like um, you know wearing the right quick crystal. Nothing against crystals; I love crystals. But if you're using a crystal or anything to as a barrier against anything getting in, um, it's not going to be enough. You need to be actually working with your energy to raise your frequency and that's what will stop anything of uh, not just trying to put fear into people about negative entities but even other people's negative thoughts that are who are thinking about you possibly thinking that you're not doing enough for them or and generally they they're probably needy people anyway but they're actually looking for your energy um, by directing negative thoughts to you um, you'll actually completely cut cut them off from your energy which is a good thing because you don't want people um you don't want those energy vampires in your space so um it's it's really important to be managing your energy rather than thinking about just protection management of your energy is probably more more important so let's take it back to the the medicine men and women what they would be doing because they're actually stepping into the spirit world they realize that um, these rituals and techniques and uh, things that they would have been taught by their elders when they were learning um, it was a very important part of being responsible um, for what you're stepping into and this is the big thing a lot of people um, are not in the spiritual field haven't been taught how to it's not that they're bad people but they just haven't been taught what to do and how to be responsible when they do step into the spirit world there's sort of a you know it's like well let's bring back the I'm, i don't know why i'm using a gun or a rifle here but um let's back bring back say the the analogy of uh, a gun you know if you're not not taught how a gun works then an accident will happen and something big will happen out of it so it's important that there's more education on what happens when you do step into the spiritual world because it, you do need to be responsible for what you're stepping into it's not just a random thing and go oh okay let's let's talk about channeling tonight let's let's make everyone do channeling in, in and you've never done it before that's um, an incredibly irresponsible thing to do but believe me, it's happened because I many years ago, um, I got a phone call from one of the uh, big um, new age shops down in, in the city. I won't mention names, but um, someone, uh, one of the younger teachers in the shop at the time, um, who was running a meditation group, decided just out of the blue to do some development work in after the meditation group. And of all things, she decided to get everyone to do some channeling. Had she actually done channeling herself before? No. So she's she's throwing every everyone in that group 
into something that, that, that she'd never done before. So it was just a bit of a random act. And um, so a huge, I guess you could say, explosion happened in that space. So what happened, a couple of people did some channeling and uh, it was co- apparently it kind of worked. But then this one particular lady um, who had had a pretty, let's say, difficult life and she was living in a house, she didn't have a lot of money, she was living in a fairly dark energy house. Um, she'd had a dark spirit hanging around her from that house. But what happened in that channeling session, um, she actually took embodied the energy of that spirit. And she was doing the closest thing to channeling, to sorry, to uh, possession that you would kind of uh, have ever seen because what happened I got a phone call the next day and they sent her up to me to give her help because what happened in that evening when the the, uh, development work was on the girl that was running it actually kicked her out because she was scaring everyone now I'll let you guys make up your mind about that one but that was that's totally responsible so but this happens a lot more than you might think people throwing themselves into things and they're not ready for it um there are teachers out there for a reason and and it is a um can be a very sensitive thing that you're doing stepping into the spirit world if you don't know what you're doing so look i've got some a couple of questions here let's let's have a bit of a look and we'll see where it takes us uh, 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 uh. Questions. I'm just looking at uh, statements first. Uh, Keith Abbott saying, Thank you. You are confirming my thought process. Cool. Uh, really good, Maurice. Good to see you today. Yeah. Keith Abbott again. It's an actual minefield to be, to be the spiritual awareness. To minefield to be the spiritual. I went through and learnt so much about what everything is and was about. Um, If you could, Keith, could you elaborate on that one? Um, Sometimes, for for some of us, um, we need to get thrown into the deep end to know how everything ticks. And look, not, not everyone in the spiritual field is going to be working with dark entities or, or dark spirits. It's, you know, this is, just it's not even a choice sometimes sometimes some of us are more adapt to working in that field for me i tend to work in the full spectrum because i don't have fear i have a respect but i don't have fear around dark entities um, or dark spirits or even extraterrestrials i know they exist i have a deep respect for them because i know they're quite powerful but I also know that I can be powerful too when I'm grounded. But the first thing that happens is when, if you're a practitioner or someone that's never had any experience working with beings like this, and suddenly you open not just yourself, but other people up to something quite dark, then the first thing that's going to hit you is fear. And you're going to be of no use to those people that you've just thrown into that space. Um, so Patricia is saying, what is the best way to protect ourselves around people carrying entities? Um, pretty much what I said, just uh, by doing a regular exercise, a regular daily ritual, and not just daily, but a, um, doing something a couple of times a day, that grounding exercise is one thing, because if we're going to be empaths, are always incredibly open people but doesn't mean they always have to be open um, that open that they're taking on everything we need to be looking after our energy the problem is with the new age with uh, spirituality is and you know correct me if i'm wrong because you guys are out there i've been doing this stuff for 31 years and i've heard of many different workshops out there but there aren't too many workshops that teach you how to manage your energy how to keep your energy stable workshops are there to teach you about other techniques on how to work on people how to do this for people 
but there's not too many about actual self-management, which is probably the most important thing, understanding the ego, understanding your ego, understanding where fear lies within you because fear is your weakness. You know, if you have fear there, then you need to actually be facing this, particularly if you're spirit, stepping into the spiritual world. So that's one thing. Um, the other thing is um, making sure that you're radiating that core star energy out. And there are other techniques, and there are quite a few different techniques, which hopefully I'll have some time to do, um, to take you through or to show you tonight, um, that will help ongoing. One of the, one of the our, probably our most susceptible time as, as a sensitive person, as a spiritual person, is when we go to sleep at night. Um, because, um, because we relax our energy. And so there is a process that I've helped people with, and I do it myself because uh, sometimes there are a lot of extraterrestrial beings around us at the moment, and not all of them are negative. Um, there are many positive ones out there. But some of these positive ones don't think the way we do. So they don't have an understanding of personal space. They don't have an understanding of what the word respect means. They're just, uh, they have a job and uh, they, they will do that in whatever way, shape or form works for them best. But they don't take our feelings because they don't work with that. They don't take our feelings into consideration. So there's been um, a process that I've uh, ended up working through, which is like a bubbling of our energy. Now, what, what we are able to access through just thought, through intention, is earth energy and universal energy. Now, one of the best things you can do is combine the both, particularly when it's around ETs, because um, if you want to actually protect your energy from ETs at night, like I said, when, it, when you're most susceptible, um, you need actually both earth energy because you got to remember an extraterrestrial being or a galactic being is not, um, their strength isn't from the earth. Their strength is from where they're from and also from the universe. But earth energy is actually our best friend with things like protection. So what I would suggest is that grounding exercise that we did to start with tonight, do that. Then breathe down into the earth and breathe up half a bubble underneath you of earth energy. Then bring your energy up through your crown and then breathe down half a bubble of universal energy. Now what that does, when you get the two to meet, you've got the best of both worlds combining, earth energy and universal energy. Now there's a little thing that um, I've learned to do and um, you don't need to just have one bubble because, because when we do go to sleep at night, our energy isn't at its most alert. So my suggestion is to put, say, three or four bubbles there. So one around your immediate body, one around your room, one around your house, and maybe one around your property. And it takes, it takes very little time to do that. It takes about um, a minute, if that. Once you've done that grounding exercise, then it's just a matter of breathing down into the earth, breathing up half a bubble, then breathing over the top of you with a half bubble of universal energy. Now, what these four bubbles are like, um, if I can use, use an analogy of when I, was a, when I was a kid, I was in cadets at school, and uh, we used to go on uh, week, um, two-week camps where on army grounds where there would be sometimes maybe 10 other school cadet camps and we'd all be in the same vicinity but of course boys will be boys and what we used to do was do midnight maneuvers and we'd throw tins of spaghetti or, or baked beans in the the other guy's fire and we'd run back to our camp and no one would know the difference but so because we we're probably a little bit maybe ahead of the bunch what we used to do was put a string up around the outside perimeter 
and hang empty tin cans to it, a couple of tin cans together. So if anyone walked through those tin can, sorry, through the string, it rattled the tin cans. So surprise, surprise, we could we knew there was someone there trying to get us. So imagine that the tin can story being those bubbles. So, so they might get the, through the first bubble, the outermost perimeter, but then as they start to knock the string on that next level, you start to pick up on it energetically and you wake up and then you have the ability then to strengthen your energy. Um, cool. Now, Keith's come back with um, another question or statement. I had a Reiki healing which blew open my crown chakra and this in turn sort of like opened my eyes to the differences of and expectations and guides and I noticed uh, there were more of a hindrance or restriction of a restriction and much guides have taught and as to how much guides have taught me about self-love and yeah look guides guides have are incredibly powerful guides are obviously on the positive for us um, they are aspects of our soul they're not just random spirits that stand in line and go oh my god i gotta work with them they're actually parts of your soul so they share the same energy and you could you could look upon them as past life experiences but past life experiences that have um, wisdom around certain attributes that you're looking to achieve um, in your life so you attract guides to you that have the lessons that will help you to reach your potential. So guides are a very powerful thing to be able to get a connection with. And, um, and they also help. Sometimes they warn you when there's stuff going on that you're not aware of. Um, but again, to actually be able to hear them more clearly, you need to be grounded. It sounds, it sounds peculiar for some people because of the teachings they've had. But base chakra is the chakra that strengthens all of the chakras, particularly the upper chakras. So those more sensitive ones, which are the ones that are going to pick up on your guides, it's that base chakra that actually stabilizes and strengthens all of them. So base chakra is like the, the number one chakra that needs to be the strongest. Then the others uh, are more inclined to be more open and stronger as well. Um, thanks, Keith. Um, got Davina. Uh, how do I open my third eye? I tried meditation, doesn't work. Depends on the meditation, Davina. Um, again, a, a, a very airy fairy meditation. I'm not trying to be sarcastic, but one that doesn't take in grounding as an importance um, isn't going to open your third eye. Um, you may as well get a crowbar. That's might, might do a little bit better, but it's not actually going to help. Um, opening your third eye, there can be many things. Um, the re like I said earlier on, the reason why the base chakra generally gets shut down or isn't strong is because of old um, childhood issues that have been suppressed. Now, when there is a childhood um, experience, memory, um, abuse, anything like that that's been suppressed, then you have no conscious memory of it. It could be even something as simple as you having experienced something on a spiritual level when you were very young and it scared you. And so if you didn't have support when you were growing up by your parents and they just poo-pooed exactly, you know, all of that stuff, then they're not going to be helping by... Um, saying it doesn't exist or just just forget it don't don't go there um, they probably don't understand what it is to be sensitive to um, a lot of parents back then didn't um, so sometimes you have to work through that emotional stuff so you're happier to actually see some it, it's about getting the imbalanced part of you into balance that's what medicine people do it's what i've been taught to do and uh, we have to go not to looking for a band-aid to try and open up the third eye we need to go back to the source of why the third eye shut down in the first place and then strengthen the energy system from there up so um, 
I'll just go back to Keith. He said, I'm in the UK and oh, good to hear you coming from all the way over there. I'm in the UK and in the beginning it was already fear that was made apparent. <laughs> it's it's huge, you know, it's crazy. The, the fear stuff that's projected out in the spiritualist uh, field is just ridiculous. If they only understood what fear does it it completely minimizes your energy wherever there's fear and anxiety fear is the, probably the one of the biggest things fear and anxiety is what minimizes the base chakra but you've got to look at where is the fear coming from you know where's the fear coming from from the training the spiritual training uh where's the fear coming from you internally um remembering that all people that get into spirituality are sensitive and most likely most of them are empaths but we probably haven't had the best of um, a run when we're ch children being an empath because back then most of our parents didn't really have that sensitive nature about them some of us have been lucky to have had that but look the majority of people i've talked to of all ages their parents weren't really that way inclined so they weren't exactly going to be pointing us in the direction of um, seeing a healer or um, you know a spiritualist person um, if we were having troubles on that level they'd probably take us to the church to get us exercised um, which don't laugh I've heard plenty of that that has gone on um, or they just shut their eyes and um, hope it goes away but in the end, you don't get any actual positive support to go through that process. So the natural thing that happens for a child is they begin to repress that. And so then it, that leads on to not trusting their feelings, to holding fear in, inside them, and which then hits us through our life as we're getting older. Um, uh, Keith, again, thank you. We are of the earth. So, so be that of the earth no need to be in the clouds exactly all the time thank you for that very much yeah look keith i've i've been very fortunate in my spiritual upbringing i guess um you know i i had probably a mixed bag of teachers which and they were the right teachers for me in the beginning but at a fairly early um time spiritually i got thrown into shamanism and I, we don't have time I'd love to tell you maybe one night, uh, we'll spend a night maybe on how my journey came about. Um, but I got thrown into shamanism pretty much in the deep end and it was kind of a sink or swing. I had swim. I had many people coming to me that had been connected to a, um, a medicine man um, who was doing pretty horrible things to people. And, uh, and so a guide... A medicine man in spirit so this was a real medicine man a living medicine man i'm talking about but a medicine man came to me in spirit and taught me was with me for about 15 years and he taught me many of many spiritual processes uh, many shamanic processes and techniques uh, and rituals um, that are there to keep our energy strong and this is what i teach nowadays to people in my shamanism courses but this is not just a, a weekend project for me. This is my life. I, I've been doing this for 31 years, um, uh, 15 years full time. And um, it's been uh, one of, uh, look, it's, it's just one surprise after another. It's been an amazing journey so far. And look, I'm 61 and I'm definitely not finished yet. I feel like I'm just beginning. And um, it's, and I've had, I've been very lucky enough to have lived with the Lakota people on Rosebud Indian Reserva Reservation um, right back as far as 2001 for a, an extended period of time for five months and then um, ongoing um, over the years in between that. And I was running small tours over there too and mixing it with medicine men and women and, uh, and taking people through lots of incredible experiences so this earth connection that um, a lot of people are looking for and i've got to say i've been inundated with people wanting to learn shamanism um, people seem to be coming out of the woodwork at the moment um, wanting to get connected with with 
more earth-based spirituality, something that brings in this understanding that we are connected to everything, to um, to the elements, to animals, birds, insects, the plant kingdom, to each other. You know, all of this segregation that's going on, this separation that's going on on the planet is so anti what uh, shamanism is about. Um, every person, every being, every culture um, has a perspective and it's all of these perspectives that are very important to be shared and to be connected with. This time in a lot of the um, native cultures on the planet, and I've talked to, well, I've talked to three main ones, the Aboriginal people, the Maori culture and the Native American culture. And through all of them, they knew this time that we're in right now where the, all the chaos is going on. They knew this time was coming and it's called um, it's called several things, but the essence of it is a coming together of the tribes. And what this is, it's not just about the native tribes. It's about white tribes as well. Um, it's all colors. Um, there isn't we, we all bleed the same blood. We all um, eat the same food. We all uh, breathe the same air. And uh, once people get over this thing around color and uh, uh, difference, um, the world will be a better place. But this time we're in is actually forcing people to get along, to, to, to understand more about each other. As you can see what's going on on the planet, um, there's far more awareness about um, people that have gone through pain, different cultures that have gone through pain. Um, I'm not going to get into a, a, a discussion about what's going on currently because I don't agree with all of it, but um, it's, it's too focused on, on one thing. This should be about everyone on the planet being good to everyone and, uh, and a lack of violence and a lack of judgment going on between everyone. Um, because there can be um, bitterness between cultures, between all cultures. And this is something that needs to be actually um, addressed by all elders, by politicians, but we can only hope that's going to happen. Um, so we've got Keith again, uh, Keith Abbott. That would be lovely. I was thrown into a Reiki energy world strict and was restricted. restricted. Um, I listened to guides rather than people had quite a few knocks along the way. It's those knocks that actually make us grow. Um, and yeah, the film Avatar is very much um, about this. You know, a lot of the films that are coming through are about this, um, about where we're going, where we're heading. Um, look, we run out of time so quickly on these things, but I would like to throw in something else, just a reminder of what's going on on the planet now and why we're in the situation we're in. So. 11 years ago, a, uh, a shift in energy occurred where everything is raising in frequency. This is going to be continuing for another 83 years or something. Uh, and then and what this cycle of energy is, is a prelude to the golden age of humanity, which is about a thousand years of peace and tranquility. Now, for that peace and tranquility to happen, the whole place has to be shaken apart. And all of the lies, all of the, the um, manipulative energy systems, manipulative people on the planet need to be shaken apart too. The truth needs to come to the surface. And believe me, there's a lot more truth there than you might think is being hidden from us all. So as, as this comes to the surface, which is these negative um, manipulative systems, are being shaken apart by this high vibrational energy that's coming in. And uh, the thing we need to remember is this is what is going to help drive us through into this thousand years of peace and tranquility. Chaos has to come first. After chaos, that's when clarity comes. Um, so the truth is coming. It's on the way. And uh, we just need to be holding ourselves strong. We need to be um, keeping ourselves grounded and uh, it's important that we stay strong through this whole process. 
Now, I don't know what's going on here. We've got someone taking over the, the chat. Um, a Paul Porter. Paul, could you please get off the line? Um, I don't know what's going on. Um, you're taking up the space, so unfortunately. Um, so I don't know what this is about, but um, if it's on the level, well, I hope you get the message out there. So Petra, I know Petra really well. I really hope it will happen. I hope we heard we're heading on a positive path uh, sooner rather than later. Yes, look, this time we're in is a knife edge. You know, it's, it's not going to just happen all by itself. Uh, we need to be doing our bit as well. Uh, there's an old saying, I think this actually comes from the Bible, and believe me, I don't normally quote the Bible too much, but uh, God helps those that help themselves, or Spirit helps those that help themselves. So we need to be working at this. We need, we need to be making sure that we become stronger. In, anything to do with personal growth or spiritual growth, there are four things we need to be catering for, physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual. So we need to be doing positive things in our life on those four levels. That's what will um, increase our vibration. That's what will be making us strong. So um, guys, if you've got any more questions, I'd love you to bring them through. Um, uh, 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 just looking to see if we've got anything else there. Okay, Paul's still coming through with messages. Um, unfortunately, uh, this is actually blocking our feed by the looks, and it's being done on purpose. What a shame people are out there doing this kind of thing. Um, anyway. We're going to be up against more people like this too. So again, all we need to do is let them be and uh, we need to be living our life in a way that suits us and the way that keeps us strong and stable. So I'm going to get a dare just to put my flash my number across the screen again. If any of you guys out there would like to talk more about this, if you've got any questions, um, happy for you to give me a call over over the next few weeks um, and um, if I can help in any way then maybe you could book in for a session or you could I can help you learn a bit more about um, protection or energy um, or the chakra system the energy system through courses workshops uh, but if I can help in, in just answering one or two questions over the phone then I'm happy to do that too. So, um, so I'm going to leave you with that, guys. And um, if there's anything else out there, so Diane's come in. When we meditate, we bring the frequency in. Um, might have to elaborate, Diane. Um, so depending on what we're focusing on when we meditate, that's what we bring in as far as frequency goes. Um, just because you're meditating, you're not being, bringing in a particular frequency, you need to have, be setting an intention when you go into a meditation, then what you're setting an intention for is what uh, comes in. So if you start off by grounding your energy in a meditation and uh, raising that frequency, then that's what you're gonna be bringing in and working with in a meditation. Um, it's all about um, your intention, really, your, what you're wanting to bring in. The clearer your intention is, um, it's like when I go and do a house clearing or a property clearing, and, um, you know, I don't go in there with fear and anxiety because I'd be no good to anyone. Um, I'm not going to be seeing anything if I'm holding that sort of energy. So I would come in, even from driving from my home to to the, the house or the property that I'm helping to clear, um, I'd be coming in there doing, doing my rituals while I'm driving 
also while I'm driving, I'm picking up little snippets of information as I'm coming into that space. But the same thing works with people too when I'm working with people. The higher vibrational energy that you're carrying within you, the more alert you are, the more uh, the stronger your abilities are. And, um, and so you're going to be picking up on a whole lot more when you're working with someone by holding that frequency. Um, so rather than think it, think of it as protecting yourself, think of, think of it as a ritual, a spiritual ritual of holding your space. Um, it sounds a whole lot better than protection. Protection just has these connotations of you're in fear of something getting you. Um, look, there is a lot more I can be talking about. Maybe next, next Thursday we can talk more about protection and I can throw in a little bit about my journey, how I got involved with shamanism. So look, guys, thank you very much for being a part of tonight and uh, really look forward to talking again and um, have a safe week and I shall see you next week. And don't forget Monday Night Meditation. Um, all the, um, the links will be there on uh, my Facebook site. Thanks, guys. See ya.